I got a degree in religion in college. <laughs> Jesus, and Ed is actually who I studied. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no one ever claps when I say I got a degree in religion. Almost every degree you clap, but all I can say is y'all can look down on me when I'm in fucking heaven, all right? <laughs> My college told me I could get my degree in four years, but I did it in six. Uh, <laughs> through God, all things are possible, all right? <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I got my degree in religion. The best part of having a degree in religion is that if I'm flirting with a woman, I can convince her that I'm whatever religion her parents prefer, right? <laughs> Be like, oh yeah, your family is Muslim? Uh, me too. Wassalamu alaikum alaikum aslan, shukran. Uh, everything's worse with bacon, am I right? <laughs> you know? Be like, oh, your family's atheist? Um, I love vaping. <laughs> Be like, oh, you guys are conservative Christian? Uh, I've never read the Bible either. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, we love to laugh. Uh, <laughs> I do believe in God, but I think we can have a sense of humor about religion. Like, I'm the type of Christian where I giggle every time I pray, thy kingdom come, you know? <laughs> I'm like, when thy kingdoms come, I will be done. <laughs> very funny, very funny, undeniable. I want to be a, pr I truly, my goal in life is to be a priest. I really want to be a priest in life, but I want to be like a cool Catholic priest, like a cool priest where like, I touch the altar boy's moms, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even the dads too, I might get progressive with it, you know? <laughs> that would be cool. Liberals would be like, we don't know what to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny, that's good. Welcome to You Can't Laugh at That, the podcast where we take topics you can't laugh at and we find ways to laugh at them in the never-ending quest to prove that anything can be funny. That uh, the, the soothing sounds you just heard were, was the, uh, the vocal stylings of one Jeffrey Osmus. Jeffrey, I said your last name right, right? Oh, you did, actually. You did, yeah. Yes. People say Asmus a lot. You said Asmus. That was great. I All that. right. I remember that because there was a, uh, there was a, a catcher uh, in, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Like the Houston Astros, Brad Brad Osmus. Osmus, Yeah, it's spelled uh, differently, but it's pronounced the same. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So I heard that once, and I was like, "Ooh, I'll remember that." Um, <laughs> and so here we are. <laughs> it came in. It came in handy. That's yes, perfect. it did. Yeah, yeah. Who's whoever said that that memorizing the starting lineup for all thirty major league baseball teams <laughs> was in vain? It's finally paid off. Did you do that or as a kid? Happen? Yeah, really, as wow. a kid. Yeah, because I would like I would like role play in my backyard. I would throw the ball up to myself and hit it and be like, oh, Brad Osmus <laughs> with a single. And, you know, People anyway. always think autism is impressive, and then sometimes <laughs> you, know, you just do that. It's like, well, that was a worthless superpower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's gotten me nowhere um, yeah. until today. So finally, take that, mom and dad. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I got. I forgot how much I giggle at my own jokes. That was embarrassing to listen to again. <laughs> Not watching it, you notice it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> but oh, when you watch shit. it, it's nice. When you're on stage, I never notice it, but that's an audio only. Yeah. Really? So that's not like a conscious choice? No. I think it's a nervous thing. Okay. I think it's a nervous thing that I've never, I don't know how to stop it. I, I don't even <laughs> think about it. No, no. I mean, I mean, I'm having fun. I do laugh yeah. sometimes, genuinely, but a lot of the time, no, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that comes across too. You know, it helps the audience have more fun and helps oh, them yeah, be more yeah. relaxed. And I learned that the last couple of years. Yeah, you can say darker shit if you're smiling. If you're yes. having fun, you can get away with saying weirder shit, which is yes. a little cheat code in comedy. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it has, to be funny. has like a grin on his face when he says shit, and people like that. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> weird, those little hacks that, that you can do to like yeah. to take something that you know isn't necessarily would be would betray their sensibilities and then make it funny with something as simple as a as a smile or a, yeah you know. it's all a big psychological game kind mm -hmm. of a lot of comedy is just tricking people psychological you know, magic tricks mm -hmm. you could you could if you got really good you could just say things in the cadence of a joke and it could be random words and they would probably laugh yeah 
That's how I talk in conversation now. <laughs> like each, every sentence I say in person, just because I haven't been around people anymore. Yeah, I just feel yeah. like everything is, I've been practicing jokes, but I haven't been around people. So I'm just, right. you know, I'm going to go out to a bar in like a month or whatever. And, You're and be in punchline cadence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. And then, and then when they don't laugh, I'll be like, well, it was funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it at the open mic. Yeah. Yeah. Either the bars are an open mic now. Hang out with your friends. That's the open mic. Right. Fortunately. Well, speaking of psychological magic tricks, that's going to be our segue into <laughs> today's topic. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, let, let's get to know uh, Jeffrey. Do you go by Jeffrey? or I actually do. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, cool. Like two, that. two syllables. It's not that much work. Good name. It's a good name. A lot of letters for two syllables. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like my name. For Pretty sure. Cool. You ever think about uh, putting an... Uh, an H in there, uh, like like our friend Jeremy. <laughs> Is that real? Is that really how he spells his name? That's all awesome. kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hippie kind parents, like, right? I call him Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy. Kind of like how I feel like a dwarf in Lord of the Rings would spell <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> 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 I like it. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, I've never thought of that. That's really funny. <laughs> So, uh, you got a degree in religion. Yes. Take us through that. <laughs> um, well, I got a degree in history as well, but okay. no one cares about that. That's boring. But I don't know. I actually don't know how it happened. Uh, I started in English, and then I decided that was that was too like pretentious for me. That was I hated that shit. Writing a ten-page paper about a Russian novel or something that was lame. I just always grew up with religion. I think it's very interesting and I think no one really knows anything about it. So I was like, I'll try to learn something about it. Everyone just learns about their own religion. They never mm -hmm. take the time to learn about the other ones. And I don't really understand why. <laughs> it's so interesting. I think one of my favorite courses in college, I took a, a world religion class. Yeah. And the professor was this like flaming gay, like just character and yeah, he was yeah. amazing like he was yeah. like the, the class was interesting he really broke it down on a human level uh -huh. and uh yeah it was it was one of the best so i understand that it's um and, and i think like you understand a lot about people's cultures and a lot oh of, yeah like, why people do what they do when you and, learn that and still like the last hundred years religion was really the only important thing in culture <laughs> like now it's not as it is still important but not as much as it was but like it's basically the most important thing in human history, probably, and no one knows anything about it. Mm -hmm. it's astonishing that mm -hmm. you you should you if you shoot a Muslim, you should have to read the Quran first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you go over to Iraq, you should have to read the Quran first. Imagine how much uh, you know. All of a sudden, now we have something in common. And I love yeah, the way yeah. you break down what the like the Quran is. What did you call it, the the sequel of the of sequel? The it is. It almost is exactly the sequel yeah. to the Bible. It's basically this almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not as good. I actually prefer the Bible, but the Quran's pretty good. It's kind of <laughs> boring, actually. It's, yeah. just, it, it's like stream of. It doesn't have a narrative. The Bible's like from beginning to end. The Quran's like kind of random. It's, it's the a, first draft. They didn't do any it rewrites. Kind of is a, it's like in its stream of consciousness. There's no order to it. It, it doesn't really make any sense, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it has some, some great has some great parts for sure. For sure, some good parts. Allah nailed it sometimes, but he got a little wordy. He got a little wordy. Mm. Yeah, he could <laughs> he could use some comedy lessons. Yeah, yeah. He needed to cut the fat. There are a mm -hmm. couple chapters he should cut the fat. Were you uh, when when you were like you were raised Catholic? Is that yeah okay yeah um yeah just christian i guess it was catholic but we weren't like hardcore we did go to do you guys go to catholic school or really i did school? yeah yeah mm -hmm. were you like hardcore was it like fuck gay people catholic school or was it um my my high school was more progressive um yeah yeah, yeah. We, mine too we, there was one of the uh religion teachers was a former nun uh, who got married had a kid, had a couple kids, got divorced, and then uh, is gay. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a journey. That's yeah. a journey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did I'm so many things they, happen. I'm surprised they let a former nun teach at a religious school. It's like, you gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get to teach. Yeah. That's I mean, she, she still kept the, the, like, the beliefs and stuff, but, um, right. obviously. Cool. Nice. But, 
you know, she, I mean, she, like there were the conservative, like religious parts of her, but socially she was a little bit more um, right. liberal leaning. Yeah. Um, so that was like our school. We had one terrible thing that happened senior year though. It's like, you know, you do those like yearbook things, like what are they called? Superlatives, like mm-hmm. best couple, whatever. Some, a lesbian couple won that and the school wouldn't let them put it in the yearbook. Uh, they had to, they just took away the best couple award it was a huge huge controversy at the school that sounds like ooh that sounds like they're still reeling from it how did, uh, did they get yeah did, i don't know what canceled happened. yeah i'm surprised nothing more happened honestly it was kind of like oh that's pretty blatantly discriminatory <laughs> yeah i mean we we've come a long way um, yeah. what did what did you graduate high school 2008 okay so that was that was a while ago yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was just, that was like at the beginning of of maybe we're you know we're starting to to get rid of some of the rigidity and really understand yeah. like I feel what's like going I graduated right when you could you kind of were not allowed to say gay anymore. Mm-hmm. That was kind of when I I was like oh well we won't say that in college but we had fun <laughs> we had a good time with it though yeah but no more <laughs> yeah yeah that's I mean you know progress progress little pride what about you steve what do you believe in you dumb bitch <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i became an atheist when i was 13 so it's Whoa, been a long, long soulless journey ago. yeah Dang. what cued you in at 13 uh someone told me and i was like oh yeah that sounds about right and then <laughs> i spent 20 years reassuring myself with confirmation bias so right right <laughs> that's what we all do i guess really yeah 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 and uh, it, if that's not what religion really is it's just confirming our confirmation bias yeah, yeah. by saying oh that yeah. that happened because of whatever it is that i believe in and that's the only answer there is the law of positive correlation yeah. right my, if right. anything good ever happens my mom's like i prayed for that and i definitely mm-hmm. god came through but then <laughs> she's prayed for so many hundreds of things that never happened so I mean, maybe God did do that. I doubt it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah he got very, around to her. Yeah, yeah, he gives you one prayer a decade or something. Yeah. I don't know yeah. exactly how that works. And then, yeah, and then you're like, "See, I told you." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what about the 15 car accidents you've been yeah. in? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. What about your identity getting stolen every two weeks for a decade? <laughs> <laughs> My mom did not not get hacked on Facebook. She oh no man. Idea. She's selling Ray Bans every other week. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> I gotta pray to God to remember my password. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are these security questions? <laughs> yeah, it's just I love God. <laughs> Dear God, please help me remember my maiden name. I need to <laughs> I need to sell these Ray Bans on Facebook. To share an InfoWars article. <laughs> <laughs> She got, she got Facebooked in the last year. Mm. You know what I mean? She got she fell into the deep end. Mm. My parents got really religious in the last like five years. They had a they had a I don't know what you call an awakening. It, an awakening kind of. They were always kind of religious, but now they got like real Bible study every week, religious and shit. But then they got way more hateful too. At the same time, the more they talk about Jesus, the more they hate everyone who doesn't look exactly like them, <laughs> and it's weird. <laughs> I don't get it. Are you, what Bible study are you going to? I feel like yeah, that's the wrong know. one. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, they, because they're from Minneapolis. So they're, mm-hmm. they have some opinions about what happened last summer that mm-hmm. are not great. <laughs> they're, I don't know. It's not good. It's not yeah. good. Yeah. Makes you yeah. a shame to be uh, related to them. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the, the caveat of, of love one another, if, they agree with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's love of very specific on another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. the good Samaritan. You know what? Uh let's skip that one. Let's yeah, let's was miss the Samaritan Middle Eastern that he deserved mm. to die in the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't a, a controversial topic at all. Uh today's topic is one that has never gotten anyone killed, and uh, there have <laughs> been exactly zero wars in the name of it. It is uh, the Bible, uh, the one of Bible. the best children's books of all time. We love the Bible. The Bible, great. Some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff in the Bible. Yeah, I read uh, I read the Bible as a kid. Um, you read the whole thing? Yeah, the pictures were the best part. <laughs> oh, yeah, they had some good pictures, yeah. I read it in high school or in, uh, like, college. Yeah, yeah. cover to cover? 
cover to cover i did i know again god needed an editor but there are some very very good parts you know, I think they understood the the natural ebb and flow of things, you know, like as a yeah. comic, you can't just do the same style of jokes for the entire hour. Right, you gotta, right. you know, you gotta, you gotta take the audience. Throw on a a genealogy in there, throw a little war in there, throw a little romance in there. Right. Yeah. Some poetry. People do forget that like pretty much every story is based on a, every Western story is based on a biblical story there. It's kind of insane. Yeah. And and aren't a lot of biblical stories based on ancient, like Sumerian? And a lot of them are, there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the flood is definitely a Sumerian thing. And like, and Jesus himself coming back from the dead, some people say it's like in this ancient Roman god, Mithra, who used to come back to life every year or something. Mm-hmm. There's always that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's probably mostly true. Yeah. I think it's probably. I believe in the Bible still, but it is probably mostly not true. <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. I think a lot of it was based off of uh, that lion that came back to life to save the day from the uh, the white witch. <laughs> oh, Aslan. Yeah, Aslan. yeah, yeah. They they backdated it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, was the Narnia's original story. Five thousand years old. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Narnia, the ancient land of Narnia. Um, well, those books are good too. <laughs> so, just, I'm curious, what inspired? Uh, your, your start in comedy, like what took you from something that is focused on more like fixed belief, uh, like religion is, is based around, uh, there's a lot of binary thinking, right? What's right, what's wrong, right, what's a sin, right. what's not, what's good, what's evil and fixed beliefs. Whereas comedy explores more of like the gray area and not, you know, and challenges the binary construct of things. What, right. what took you from, um, from one to the other? I did, it's kind of weird because I didn't really like I didn't really know what stand up was as a kid. I had I literally had no idea what stand up comedy was until I was eighteen, probably. I didn't. I told my friend talked about Dane Cook one day, probably senior year of high school. I had never heard of stand up comedy, and then I still really never. I I, there, I went to college in Madison, Wisconsin, and there's a very good comedy club there, but I still I didn't even discover it till my junior year, and then I went. And I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing of all time. Because there's an open mic night there and there's like 200 people at it every week. Damn. Insane. And then all my, it was basically my friends who got me. They were like, you're funnier than them. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have done it, honestly. Mm. I had a a friend from Saudi Arabia who really wanted to do stand-up, but he couldn't he couldn't quite speak English well enough. So he kind of got me to do it for him. And then I just liked doing it. That's kind of how it happened. Okay, so you, you were, I was you were kind the of like proxy. his proxy. Yeah. I kind of, we kind of like wrote jokes together for like the first like couple months, and then eventually I did my own thing. But you're like the surrogate. Time, yeah, I was kind of like a surrogate. He'd be like, oh, I wrote, and he was really funny. So I would tell his jokes for him, which was <laughs> because he was he couldn't quite wrap the letters together quite fluently mm. enough. <laughs> so that was kind of how it happened. I just really talk about religion for a few years on stage, but. Eventually, I did, yeah. But I think a lot of comedy about religion is very uh, predictable. Mm-hmm. It's very like, oh, the Bible's stupid. Isn't this so stupid? Oh, blood, so stupid. And it's like, that's kind of boring to me. I, I, Jesus I, walked on water. Yeah, how did he <laughs> walk on water? You know, the, the Bible's my favorite fairy tale or what? I, I don't mm-hmm. know. Like, I, I think a lot of comedy is like, Nothing wrong with atheist Steve, but it's from that. that <laughs> Trust like, me, I get it. Dude, <laughs> listen, uh, David, do I ever talk about religion on on stage? I don't ever. Like, I just because no. I know the like going into comedy, I knew how cliche it was, especially from the atheist perspective. I just stayed away from it because it's just fucking annoying. Mm-hmm. No, I think when you want to turn being... off the audience right away, go ahead and just be like, "Hey, I'm an atheist. Now let's talk about this shit." And yeah, yeah I think stupid. I think anyone who thinks they're really correct in either side is annoying. Yep. Like anyone who comes at religion and thinking I'm correct, it's like you. There's no proof. There's an atheism. There's no proof. There's Christianity. It's just a, it's just a faith thing. Yeah, so I mean, that's why when people get too into it, either way, I'm like, that's boring. I've never been opinionated in comedy. Like I talk about things that kind of state my opinion, but it's always about being funny, not being opinionated. So it's just right. jokes. Yeah, in the end, I want it to be funny. 
Right. Like I imply my opinion. Sure. But I don't go, oh, this sucks. I don't make judgments on things. Yeah. I just get to the funny, make them laugh. You fucking idiot. It's like, yeah, I, yeah. I gen, I, I rarely try to make points occasionally, yeah. but not very often. Yeah. It's yeah. not fun. It's not no. fun. Nope. And it's I, not. Don't, I don't know why that's so in vogue now. I don't, I guess people did. You, I guess you, George Carlin did do that, but mm -hmm. I honestly don't think he's very funny, but <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know why people want to make points so badly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Annoying. Yeah. And, and especially when it comes to religion, like you're taking this thing that is very, like I said, I mean, it's, it's fixed beliefs and then you're attaching your own fixed belief to it. So yeah. you're not really breaking up the construct at all. You're not making any new points. You're just furthering the, the points that literally impossible to, to prove if you're yeah. right or not there's no there's no way to prove it so it's right. a waste mm -hmm. of time there yeah. aren't any pro there aren't many christian comics i mean there are but i don't i've never seen that have you guys seen any like really bible thumping comics really before tim hawkins <laughs> tim hawkins you're familiar that, is I, he the guy who's the mayor or something no, I know. Uh, I know a few of the like Christian circuit, kind of, like the big ones, the ones that like oh, sell out the mega churches. And oh, Chris, I've heard of him. Mm -hmm. Didn't he get? He got kind of caught. Yeah, Chris. This yeah. dude's name is Chris. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. He's just destined to be a Christian comedian. That's hilarious. <laughs> it was so it. funny because the thing he did wrong was like not really that wrong, but because he was a Christian comic, it was held to a higher standard or whatever. What he did basically do? just DM some women. That's really all. That and he was did. like, "Hi." He said, "Hi, I think you cute." Oh God, he can't do that out of wedlock. Ruined. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess is hypocritical of him, but I it didn't seem too bad. No, uh, we had Zach Wyckoff, who's a who's a comic out of Cincinnati, who is uh, who's Christian, and he's you know he's got very strong beliefs, but the way he jokes about it, um, he asks questions of the you know again of the fixed beliefs. He's hilarious right. too. Mm -hmm. He's right. very funny. I yeah, think we I did. Him. Yeah, I remember him being very funny. Yeah, and very very likable. Mm. okay okay um, yes obviously I mean, that yes helps, but yeah <laughs> such a nice guy his uh like yeah, his parents questions yeah you gotta ask mm -hmm. questions you can't just go with the the heterodox belief that's lame yeah <laughs> and, and i and i think you do that um in, in in your bits about it you know the the last like 20 minutes of your album yeah, are centered around. Yeah. yeah i try to be like this may be true but also isn't it funny like mm -hmm. don't don't discount it but also realize it's kind of absurd at the same time right i think right. that's kind of my angle right but you don't just outright say it which is no that's the way not. to do it you know yeah 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 you, yeah someone could draw various various opinions from what i say for, and that's fine i don't mm -hmm. care <laughs> it's yeah, not my wanna... job to tell you what to think when you walk out and that's right. what I feel like a lot of things, a lot of shows you're like, you should just get a pamphlet at the end. Like this is what <laughs> we believe now. This is the audience's belief system right now. Right. It's very lame. Yeah. You want to bring, you know, no matter what their beliefs are, you want to bring them along with you. You want yeah, everybody yeah. to laugh. Exactly. Yeah. I want every generally everyone to laugh. This, yeah. I actually don't think you want everyone in the crowd to laugh though. I think the best comedy gets like 85% of people to laugh. Mm. Because if everyone laughs, then it's probably a little too basic, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like people are stupid and you don't want everyone to agree. That's not, in history, that's never really worked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want everyone to laugh, but most people. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing that's so boring to me about comics who are attacking religion is that... Um, like they have an opportunity to get on stage and make people like the, the most powerful way to get somebody to see your side is to make them laugh. Right. And you can't do that by saying the way you think is wrong. Listen to what I have to say, because now they're not paying attention to you. But if right. you can get them to think that like if you can get them to laugh, um, that that's kind of them like being on board with. You've created like an us or them thing. Yeah. And then why would someone listen to, someone who just said they're stupid <laughs> yeah no one's good why would i oh okay well yeah I'm, I'm an idiot why would i listen to you yeah right you can call i think calling people stupid is actually very funny but that as long as it's like a clearly a joke but like just saying 
God isn't real and blah, blah, blah. Not good. You just attack somebody's identity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's okay. I, yeah, I guess. You can't you can you can't make fun of other religions, but you can make fun of Christianity, mm-hmm. uh, which is fine. I get it. We've been on power for a while. I get yeah. it. Um, right. It's not punching down. <laughs> yeah, it's not punching down. It's punching. Yeah, exactly. Right, but you know, according to some people, Christianity is under attack. That's so funny. My mom would say that. She yeah. That. Yeah. She's They're thinking, prosecuting Christians. Yeah. Whatever. Starbucks cup. <laughs> <laughs> what do you care? You've never been to Starbucks. You don't even drink coffee, but it's huge. <laughs> oh man, if that was a if that was like in the Bible, like if uh, if the, the goat skins don't say, you know, yeah, <laughs> we must have a mistletoe tree on every goat flask. <laughs> right? They're they're attacking they're attacking <laughs> Passover. It's the war Passover's on Passover. Like- it's a Christmas tree. It's not even in the Bible. There's no, none of that shit. The word Christmas isn't even in the Bible. <laughs> That's what a lot of religion is weird because they get so into things that aren't even in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like abortion is never mentioned in the entire Bible. Mm-hmm. Isn't uh, the fact that Jesus is the son of God, isn't that not in the Bible? Or what? not the son of God, but the, I forgot what it was, but it was added later. It wasn't actually oh. part of the story. I can't remember exactly what it was. Mm. So oh, in the Nicene Creed, you mean? In yeah. Like prayer we say, yeah, there's something they added. That was in the Da Vinci Code, I remember. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I'm not there. Catholic. I believe in Dan Brown. Dan and that's Brown. It, everything. <laughs> I read those books when I was 13, and I was just like an atheist for like two years because of Dan Brown. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. He got me. <laughs> Tom Hanks, man. He's very convincing. Tom Hanks. Yeah. He's a pedophile. Yeah. Pedophile. Yeah. It, that's why he's, that's why he's a Greek citizen. Because <laughs> he's a pedophile from the Greeks are pedophiles. Why do people think Tom Hanks is a pedophile? Because uh, he's so wholesome that he's not because, because of He has to have he something wrong. Mm-hmm. He has right. to have some vice. No one's wholly good. Yeah, there's got to be some skeletons in his closet. That's why clean comics are always canceled. They always are bad people. <laughs> I, I I truly believe that. If you don't swear on stage, you do something very terrible off stage. Yeah. You can't. You can't. Everyone has bad things, but you choose to not let it out on stage, so you let it out in women, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't cuss. You don't yeah. have sex. What 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 am I missing? There's like, something you, you're. Oh, I yeah. torture dogs, but yeah. I don't swear on stage. No, like a good Christian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the way you approach this topic, it it's kind of you kind of ask questions. You kind of challenge the construct uh, in a way that doesn't overtly do it. Uh, for example, you have that clip, and I think this is the first clip I ever saw of you was uh, if Jesus was white, oh, and. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, if you want to throw that up and and go through that, because you kind of the way you do it, it's like if if what you believe to be true was actually true, and that's kind of the angle that you take. Right. Like, oh, right. we believe that Jesus is this uh, wasp, this waspy character who is flowing. Like, what would it be like? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the YouTube clip. I remember when that Notre Dame thing burned? <laughs> I think there was one good thing about Notre Dame for right now. I think there's one good thing. I think you guys might agree. At least in the charred remains of Notre Dame, Jesus was finally depicted as black. <laughs> it was finally historically accurate. <laughs> if you think Jesus was white, you might be a redneck. <laughs> if he was white, that would be his biggest miracle. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, you came back from the dead, but how'd you live in the desert with no SPF 50? <laughs> <laughs> if he was white, every other chapter of the Bible we like, and then Jesus did not preach on that day, for he was burned. <laughs> <laughs> if Jesus was white, the whole Bible would be his disciples interrupting him like, yo, dude, why are you white? <laughs> <laughs> Sick. <laughs> <laughs> White boy don't know where his daddy is. <laughs> it 
it is fun Again, to say white boy don't know where his daddy is. Yeah. That's, that's funny to say. <laughs> is that where the joke started? With Jesse? I think I like, yeah, reverse engineered to that. Yeah. How can I, I frame uh, something around this line? It all started with the Notre Dame line. And then it, I've been trying to write a joke about white Jesus for a while, but it just never really worked out. But that's people, when you start with a little topical thing, then it's easier to get into something that people might not like to hear. Mm -hmm. I think every white person knows Jesus wasn't white. They just don't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think it's just like, we just, we'd be embarrassed to admit it. I don't know why. And and then you ask the question, well, what if he was? Yeah. Yeah. And then you realize, oh yeah, there's, I mean, how it doesn't make any sense. It's It's like 90 something percent of Christians are white. So it's like, yeah, so you know what I mean? Like so, so he's yeah. got to be white. There's yeah. got to be a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, there's no, he lived in Palestine. You hate these people. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny. He was, he, but I also think a lot of people say Jesus was black. That doesn't make sense either. Mm-hmm. No. He's brown. He's a Middle Eastern guy. <laughs> So that would be there, that's an example of people on both sides being stupid. It, it's like, it's that's, it's, uh, the compromise is built in. It's right there. It's literally a mix of the two colors. It's perfect. And you cannot get it right. Mm. Yeah. I think the only, actually, there is one, there's only one joke I've ever kind of hinted at my atheism where I say he's not black or white. He's, he looked like Osama bin Laden. And then I say that he, uh, He's like James Bond. I don't care if he's black and wh- or white. He's a fictional character. And that's, right, that's it. Right, right. And that's yeah. it. And that's, that's, that's looking like Osama. That's funny. Yeah. He, he probably, him, probably yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. I like how he's always hot. That's what I think is so funny. <laughs> ripped Jesus. Jesus. Always fucking ripped. Yeah. Like he's dying, bleeding out on his last breath, but you still yeah. want to fuck him. Those Cavizel. washboard abs. <laughs> washboard abs after he hasn't eaten for 40 days. Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a miracle right there. I mean, he walked mm-hmm. everywhere, so maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in good cardio. Yeah. Right, yeah. He, he didn't die of a heart attack, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. for sure. It's a, but the one thing that's interesting is that in other countries, they portray Jesus as like, what they look like Chinese Christians say he looks Chinese. And then in Africa, they have black Jesus. So it's, I guess it's just a, what were you were saying? A confirmation bias. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They won't Filipino believe Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They, they nail themselves to crosses. They actually like mm-hmm. nail themselves to crosses. On, Wait, on where? Easter. In, I think the Philippines and Manila. Yep. Oh, they're not very a... religious in the Philippines. Yeah. They actually do it. Dang. Yeah. That's fun. It's I cosplaying. Guess. Yeah, that, they, that's commitment. Yeah, that's absolute commitment. If there's a heaven, you get to heaven if you do that. I think. Yeah. No matter what you did, no matter what sins you committed, you nail yourself to a cross. You go to heaven. Very quickly, too. <laughs> Very quickly, yeah. Oh, that's that. Yeah, the cross, the crucifix. That's a rough punishment. <laughs> I think about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> You do it the, to Romans were, the Romans were brutal. That's fun. We just don't kill people like that anymore. It's boring now. It's just bomb them. They're obliterated. It's boring. Want, yeah. Too quick. Yeah, have some imagination. Yeah. <laughs> Why want a public hanging? <laughs> don't you think the public hanging? You know that was like the that was like a, the Rose Bowl back then. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> there was a parade. We're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, Jeremy's getting hung. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to say Jeremy, but <laughs> the only name on the screen right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like lynching's just... just been like a thing that goes back as far back as we know. I suppose, yeah, yeah, you know? Like, yeah, like execution without a trial. Yeah, they've been doing yeah. that for quite mm-hmm. some time. Was it just Judas became first... illegal in like the seventies. That's that's how crazy America is. They just made lynching illegal in like nineteen seventy three or something. Now it's problematic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what a label! What a la- yeah! What a word choice. Problematic. problematic. I love that. I'd, I'd like to sit on a pitch meeting for a crucifixion. Like, how are we going to kill these Christians? Well. <laughs> Do something, yeah. They never did it again. They they just did it for Jesus. That was yes anding that went way too far. Yeah, yeah. We'll get two big beams and then. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. 
feet. Whatever. <laughs> Who gives it? We'll poke him with a lance too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they run. They poke him to see if he's dead. Like, just let him go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and make him sit up there for the length of a Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah. 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 With no CGI. And they're all taunting him or whatever. And the guy next to him on the cross is saying some shit, too. I can't remember <laughs> what. Yeah. And I, then the I other like guy. The, I always think of the Monty Python where they all are hanging. And mm-hmm. what did, what song did they sing? I can't even remember, but. Oh, Always every sperm. look on the bright, oh, yeah, side, the bright side of life. life. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and Monty, I mean, that, that was a, a, an irreverent take on, you know, something that was held so dear. It was Monty Python was ahead of their time. Um, a lot Python of the great comedians are. Some of the best comedy ever made. You can't laugh at that. <laughs> now, I'm I'm really interested in the, the historical aspect of... Uh, of religion, specifically mm-hmm. Christianity, just because that's the that's the one that's kind of monopolized the conversation over right, the over right. the centuries. Yeah, well, um, oh yeah, the re- origin, the history of religion. What I think about is the or I think the origin of religion is very interesting, like how it started, and like because that that's what I learned in in college is that like Christianity like was one of like five religions that started around the same time, and they just happened to win. For whatever reason, it does. There's there's a lot of factors into it, but like, there's like this other prophet named like Apollonius who had like a huge following. Everyone's like Apollonius is the son of God, and then it just didn't pan out for him. <laughs> like it just petered out after a hundred years. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird how those things go. Did he like say the N word? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. He didn't have a good publicist or PR yeah. team or something. Well, because Christianity already had the Jews, so they already had a people to kind of spread it. So I think mm-hmm. that kind of helped Christianity a lot. And then now in modern times, you we see like religions, like Scientology is like a religion that we can literally see starting before our eyes, which is it's very scary. <laughs> It's very scary. <laughs> seen any of the documentaries? I've seen like three. <laughs> I I read the Going Clean book or Clear book. Yeah. yeah. It's it's I went to the Scientology thing in Los Angeles. They they really they man, it, it's very persuasive. <laughs> they, they got good video editors. <laughs> mm, they do. They make some beautiful imagery. <laughs> They're cha- they they rival ISIS. With the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. They're the white ISIS. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, the the just steadfast belief in something, the the claim that my way is the right way is an instant red flag for me. So yeah. you know, when somebody asks what you know if I'm religious or like what religion I am, I'm like anything that doesn't claim to have the answers. Right, I, right. Anybody who claims to have the answers doesn't understand how the world works because we're never going to have all of the answers. And yeah, and religion is a way to to uh, create certainty uh, rather than actually like, looking into things. And and you know the answer to everything was oh it's God for so long before the scientific revolution. And that's that's so interesting to me. That's that's kind of what we learned about in one of our classes is that. I can't remember the guy who said it, but his theory is that religion is like a mountain and each religion is the sunlight shining on it from a different angle. And that all religions are based, pretty much every religion is searching for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's why I don't understand why you said how you can be like ours is better than yours. It's like they all boil down to the same five or 10 tenets basically. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how people get so arrogant I mean, right. we kill people still constantly over it, and it makes right. absolutely no sense. Right, and in total uh, defiance of because most religions have, you know, one of their rules is, is, is how about no, not how about not murdering people? Yeah, but then they always they always come up with a way around it. Mm-hmm. They always were like, oh, well, they actually said you can murder if they uh, said your mom was fat. So actually, it's okay <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. The same with being rich. Every religion pretty much says you shouldn't be rich, that it's a sin to be rich, but they twist it like that. What's that pastor's name in Houston? I can't Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Yeah. He, uh, what's his, his like belief is like called prosperity theology. And it's like the belief that you're rich because God is blessing you. 
And that means that, oh, I'm doing something right because I'm rich. So you guys should be like me. It's very bizarre how people twist it. Yeah. I don't see the need to hoard. Like that's a very, that's a very kind of a lack mindset, you know, in, in a world because yeah, yeah. the idea of hoarding wealth comes from the idea that they're, you know, that we're going to run out of stuff and I need this stuff just in case. Right. Now, because of science, because of, of all these developments in the last few hundred years, that's not the case anymore. Like the, there's enough for everybody. The idea that we right. can make the pie bigger versus like, you know, this, this pie is fixed in size. It's like, dude, get a, get a bigger plate, make a bigger pie. Yeah. So more people can eat. You cross the line. So uh, from an objective perspective, I mean, really the Bible was the pun, not intended gospel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it had all of the answers for life's questions. And if you had a question that wasn't answered in the Bible, it didn't matter. Or the answer was yeah. just God. You know, what's the wind? It's God. Okay. Yeah. Problem solved. Oh, that person is sick because of God. Mm -hmm. That was the answer. Uh, why, why are birds fly? God. Like everything you was that. Like if you were to go to a library, there would be one book and that's it. Because <laughs> like, this is the one that has all the answers. This is the manual for everything. I, one Harry Potter sized book. I wish I would have lived in that time. It would Life would be so much simpler. You wouldn't have to. I think like I think people were way happier than you'd be like, why did that happen? God, God, you didn't have to think so much. Mm -hmm. I bet it was probably kind of pleasant ignorance, honestly. Yeah, there were no open mics because nobody was there asking questions without being. No one's asking questions. You just like what what we do, whatever. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, easy to make fun of, but like it's probably pretty fun. <laughs> it's probably not too intellectually trying. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to think. The, right. the dumbest people I know are always the happiest ones. Every <laughs> every guy I know from high school is an absolute idiot, has never frowned in a decade. <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. They didn't even know there were riots last summer. They had no idea. <laughs> yeah. They live in their little bubble. There's parties in the streets. There's parties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to I want to go into um, your your closing bit from your album where you uh, you quote what was it Ecclesiastes or oh or, which oh the ejaculate thing yeah or the no, um, or Shamgar Shamgar oh Shamgar do I say it's Ecclesiastes on the album I, I don't oh, I don't remember I, I probably I got it, it wrong it is in Judges it's in Judges but sometimes I just make a little joke for myself and say the wrong book. <laughs> yeah. And that's a way more fun word to say anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ecclesi yeah. It's a Nobody great says Ecclesiastes in a, or Deuteronomy. Come on. Yeah. Deuteronomy is a great word too. Ecclesiastes is one of the better books in the Bible. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Go on, yeah, it's got it nothing on the smut that is the Song of Solomon though. Song of Solomon's good too. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, let's hop on that, that last track. Okay. okay, here we go. This is my favorite verse of the Bible. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 5. This is how it goes. This is a real verse. So funny. And then there was a man named Shamgar, son of Anath. Please don't laugh. Is that the fucking cat lady, I bet? God. Get her, God. I'm God's little snitch. Uh, the callback, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And then there was a man named Shamgar, son of Anath, who killed 6,000 Philistines with a cattle prod. He, too, saved Israel. Praise be the Lord. Uh, thank, you, thank you. That's a real verse in the Bible. Shamgar kills 6,000 people with a cattle prod, and that's the only time he's mentioned in all of human history. <laughs> The 13th century BCE Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> like, he beat the final level on Grand Theft Auto Palestine. <laughs> like, Shamgar kills 6,000 people. He only gets one verse in the Bible. Jesus gets half the book, and he only got himself killed. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, have you guys ever been to a farm and seen a cattle prod? Like, you know, they're just like these sticks meant to annoy cattle. And Shamgar was killing people with these things. That's like if the soldiers in World War II ran on shore at Normandy singing, this is the song that gets on all the Germans' nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I used to think my grandpa was tough because he killed 17 Nazis, or 21 if you think Italians are people. Uh, 
It's okay, I can say that because my grandpa is racist. Uh, <laughs> it's part of my heritage. I'm a quarter racist. Uh, <laughs> You guys have uh, you guys ever heard of a uh, uh, Wisconsin hero Jeffrey Dahmer? We know this guy. We know, you know Jeffrey Dahmer. If you don't know Jeffrey Dahmer? He killed 17 people. Ooh, tough guy alert. Watch out. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer killed 17 people, and there's 35 documentaries about his life. Shamgar killed 6,000 people, <laughs> and he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> So I made him one last year. Check it out. Uh, I added that he was the first man to prefer hand jobs. <laughs> Till this guy, baby. Uh, <laughs> we're having fun. We're having fun. Okay, we'll get out of here on this. The coolest thing I did with my religion degree is that in, in every paper I wrote in college, this is true, I used the word ejaculate in every paper I wrote in college. Ha 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 ha, very funny. That's why it took six years. Uh, and I did this because in this history class, we learned that in English in the 16th and 17th century, the verb to ejaculate was a synonym for to speak. Like they'd say things like, and then Colonel Winchester ejaculated to his wife. Uh, sorry, darling, I just ejaculated. And it was incredibly, <laughs> it was incredibly confusing. And I've saved this piece of paper since I was in college. This is the first sentence of my senior thesis paper that I used to graduate from college. This is entirely true. This is how it started. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, Jesus is all alone in a cave with a dead child. <laughs> and in order to bring that child back to life, Jesus ejaculated unto his father. <laughs> <laughs> and my professor circled it and wrote, word choice question mark? <laughs> <laughs> And that joke cost $98,000. Okay, y'all, have a good night. You've been great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bye, 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 bye. Yes. <laughs> we just wanted you to hear that applause for you. Yeah, I know. I like you, that. Do you remember what good. it's like? That felt good. I like that. Okay. So. I love Shamgar. What a guy. Uh, oh, there are just so many extraneous characters in the Bible who are I just know. brought up in one sentence, and that's yeah, it. That, that it's so funny. Yeah, I want to do one about the other ones, too. Yeah. It's well, like there's these all these spinoffs for, you know, these uh, in the, the, these major franchises. You've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> and then there's, the, you know, there's the Inhumans. Like, nobody knows about those characters in the yeah. comics, and they're making an entire movie about them that Kit Harrington's in. Right, and, uh, right. They got to do that with the Bible. <laughs> right. There's so it's why is there Jesus only or Joseph or Moses? Come on. Right? There's Nobody no, there's no movies about Aaron. Yeah, yeah, Aaron. What about Ruth? Aaron's so funny. And he's always choosing to worship another god when Moses is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <He immediately turns laughs> every single time. God leads them out of the desert and then immediately he starts worshiping a golden bull. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that, that. That sounds like a, a, a hilarious romp starring Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah. Give, the give, give. priest of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh let's let's answer the, the question or or attempt to answer the question. What isn't funny? about the Bible. Why is it not funny to some people? Uh, but you've uh, proven that it is funny. So they, they take it too seriously. They think God doesn't have a sense of humor. That's what it really comes down to. You think God, for some reason, they think God made us humorless. And I don't understand that. Mm. Like God made us fart. He made us do all this shit. So if you believe that, then obviously he made humor too. So you think, and also do you, I don't, the thing is that, do you think God is so petty, so insecure that he would be mad about a joke? That's what I don't get. He made the whole universe and he's going to be like, I, I hate when they make fun of me. I Did hate they call me they fat. <laughs> they call me fat. Oh my God. They said I'm a she who gives, he doesn't care. It's crazy. Uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't know why people don't find it funny. I really don't get it. Honestly. Oh, man, I read a book a few years ago that it was like all the it was basically the whole thing was talking about his insecurity 
And, uh, and like, I think it was called like God is mad at you or something. Oh man. Now I can't even find it on Google. Maybe it's in my. And they burned that book. We got rid of that book. It it goes through the whole Bible and is like, it, it's very, it's very funny. It's very thought provoking. Uh-huh. Uh, what's it called? And it's about like I'm God to... being insecure. And... Yeah. Okay. Okay. And God is disappointed it... in you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, what was it? Uh, was it uh, Elisha uh, who like people made fun of him for being bald? And then so yeah. God sent a bear to murder them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> part of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. God, the Old Testament God was very petty and very easily uh, perturbed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, that, that, yeah, I don't, I also don't get why Christians even care about the Old Testament. It's like, that shit's, that shit's done. <laughs> that's the old shit. That's the right. part that says you hate gay people, but that's not, that's not what it is anymore. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand that. There's a lot of shit I don't understand. <laughs> right. God did yoga, uh, some, sometime around, uh, one eight. Uh, yeah. 1 yeah. Yeah. God <laughs> filled out, got liberal and then you missed the boat. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus was a socialist. Like absolutely he was, yeah. but they don't, for some reason they don't get that. And do you think people are offended because they see like they they aren't secure in their beliefs and that's what offends them? Because to me, if I know something is true and somebody is like, you know, counteracts that it doesn't offend me at all because it's like, well, I know I know the truth. So, you know, yeah, have your opinion. It's it's whatever. Just don't hurt I think anybody. It does with it. make them cast doubt because they're like, if someone especially like if it's a comedian, let's say, and they liked the comedian for mm-hmm. like the first 20 minutes and then the comedian makes fun of religion they're like well i kind of liked and respected this person how could they now not believe what i believe so they're yeah it cast doubt on their belief and mm-hmm. people it makes them feel insecure that's really what it is i think or they're too they're too stuck in their own ways to have a new thought they can't they've just thought this they probably would never learned a single thing about any other religion they've been told Moses is real. Maybe he wasn't, he wasn't, but they've been told that the, everything in the Bible is real their whole lives. So to admit that they've been lied to their whole lives would destroy their worldview. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's why, it's... that that's why when you teach people like a very monocentric view of the world, they, they cling to that because they don't have anything else to cling to. So right. they're not going to have us until you teach them a more pluralistic way to look at the world. They're, they're always going to be that insecure and scared thing. Right. The idea that uh, Christianity is a monotheistic religion too. That's, that's one, like if you were to tell somebody who's a devout that, no, it's actually, it's dualist. um, And then Catholicism is very uh, polytheistic when you bring in like, Oh, this is the, the saint of lost things. This is the saint of fire. This is like, you're just creating gods. Yeah, I've never thought of it. Yeah, you're right. The saints is a bizarre thing. That is, they are just little gods. They're just little gods ever scattered all over. Yeah, all it's over like, Italy. All yeah, over what's Italy. The, <laughs> they're all Italian. They're all Italian. <laughs> like yeah. you'll go to a church in Europe that has like Saint Anthony's foreskin or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the relics, dude. They the love relics. the relics. Oh, relics is so, and there's like 14 of Saint Francis's calf bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just find a, a head they find and they're a like, bone, it's like Peter. Francis for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He was a real guy, but he didn't have 14 calf bones, probably. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a, uh, that's, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you're sure. right. Saints are a bizarre. My family never got into that, but some that's more like uh I feel like that's more European than American religion. Mm-hmm. I think we don't get into saints as much here. But mm-hmm. or like in uh, Hispanic Catholicism, they're really into saints. Mm-hmm. Like what's mm-hmm. that one? Guadalupe. She's like yeah. basically like a god. She's like another another god, basically in Hispanic. Yeah. What was what was her story? Wasn't that it was uh, like she saw right like Mary? after she she saw Mary and then somehow Mary's face got put on a blanket or something. She's the patron saint of candles. She yeah, is? <laughs> <laughs> she probably is. Yeah, ceremonial candles. <laughs> 
Now, have people been offended by your uh, your bit? And uh, um, if they have, have they like come up to you and said anything about it? Um, they some. I used to not be. I figured out how to make it more palatable to people. At first, I was kind of a little more antagonistic and not. I didn't like. I came at it from like a "you're stupid" perspective, and mm. then I figured out that that does work. That would go really well in like liberal rooms, but then it didn't travel very well. So then I learned to be like, "Oh well, I'm religious. I believe in this too. Don't worry. I'm on your side, but we can have a little fun with it." And then I figured out people didn't really get too offended. They might not laugh, but near the end, people didn't really get offended. The abortion joke. That would offend people, but mm. not the, the stuff about the Bible, really. And that, mm-hmm. I think, I think generally, if I admit that I believe in God, then they're okay with it. Then they're okay with it. And and it's an obscure character too. You're not. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm making fun of Jesus or anything. They've they never. I doubt they'd ever heard of him before I mention it. So mm-hmm. yeah, they don't care. They, mm-hmm. I, I honestly think they probably think I'm making it up. Mm. I bet they don't even believe me. <laughs> Which but, I mean, I believed you. And, and yeah, and, it and is I, real. It is I'd real. be willing to bet that most most people do, um, even without so. without having that fact in front of them, because it is obscure and there's a lot of obscure stories in the Bible. Yeah. A lot of obscure things happen. And I think and then you just state the fact that nope, this is what it says to a T. It is. It, he is mentioned one other time. I do lie. He is briefly mentioned again, but it just the one the, I really like that. I could never make this part of the joke. I couldn't figure it out. But like they they say he killed people with a cattle prod, but it's like the word they say is cattle prod. It's actually a word that they've never used again in ancient Hebrew. So they don't really know what weapon he used. They just think it's cattle prod. And I just think that's amazing that it could be a weapon that was never again used in human history or something i've oh he's like invented his own killing machine or something yeah he perfected it we can't we can't even hope to to we touch could that. never slaughter like shamgar did hitler wishes he had that shit right that, he, that dude needs a story man he yeah really i know i always wanted to make merch with shamgar i didn't know if anyone <laughs> would buy it though but i like it so you you put it in terms that are that are very funny um, in a way that that makes sense to just the the I mean the the dumbest person in the room and the smartest person yeah. in the room at the same time the John Claude Van Damme reference the GTA Palestine mm-hmm. um, the, you know Jeffrey Dahmer comparing it to you know why doesn't this guy have documentaries right um, right you got to because when it's something so obscure I think you have to really get a little uh populist with the references mm-hmm. that you picked them i picked the most obscure reference imaginable so i gotta i gotta give the people something they know then so otherwise they're just like what is he talking about mm-hmm. you have to relate otherwise they're just like you're just like preaching to them mm-hmm. at that point yeah i've heard some um some really interesting topics approached by comics but they they haven't found a way to connect them with an audience. And that's a really good tool to use something that everybody knows. Should do. Yeah. To do like really popular references. People love references Mm -hmm. and they can be funny. Of course it just makes them be like, Oh, this performer is just like me. (laughs) He's played grand theft auto too. Oh, wow. I'll listen to him. (laughs) People just want to be related to Right. Uh, and, and I think it's funny that, you know, you compare him to, to Wisconsin hero Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, uh, I love saying Wisconsin hero Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> so that one that makes me laugh. He, yeah. he, with they, I think Wisconsin has the most uh, serial killers per capita. Really? They, they've calculated. Yeah. Of any. The guy, uh, Ed Gein, is from Wisconsin. And mm-hmm. there's one more I can't remember. Oh, the making a murder, but that's not really a serial killer. But the, there's another guy I can't remember. But yeah, luckily you're from Minnesota. So. Luckily I'm from Minnesota. Yeah. I don't think we. I think there is one from Minnesota. Some. Well, there was a there was a Hmong hunter who shot like eight people during deer hunting season or something like that. I missed. I can't remember his name. Yeah, I missed eight times. Yeah. Um. The uh. The, the so the Dahmer comparison is great. You know, he killed seventeen people, and and Shamgar killed six thousand. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Yeah, you did make a Wikipedia page. 
I did not make the Wikipedia okay. page, but there is a Wikipedia page. Did you contribute to the Wikipedia it, page? I did add something, but it got deleted. Was it the, the hand job one? Yeah, I tried to add it a lot, but uh, the, the Wikipedia is pretty good about patrolling their content, actually. So you can't slide that shit in. I tried. <laughs> hand job was one of the buzzwords that the yeah, second somebody that's the buzz they had it. popped up. Yeah. I got a dedicated sham guard person who's always watching. <laughs> and you know, one fucks with it. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of things that have happened in the Bible that are funny. And uh and so in doing some research for this uh for this episode. Yeah. I found a uh 101 of the craziest, strangest, most ridiculous Bible absurdities. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that. I'm gonna share that so you can see what I am seeing and get anxiety from all of my open tabs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a lot. I, the uh, the one that that I think is really funny is that the elitist 144,000 Jews will be going to heaven. Everyone else is going to hell. Then, then what's the purpose of of living? Oh, that's a specific number of Jews right there. Right. Who decided that? <laughs> no, we won't judge. I'm going to cross it out and put uh, Baptists. Yeah, right. That's that's the true story. We're being safe. The, being the rapture. Right. Just there should be a space people. shuttle called the rapture and just load them up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to send them to Mars. <laughs> See, we were right. Um, the Can't have long hair. That's funny. Right? Oh, they would hate Brooklyn. Suck on that, John Lennon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what else? The... Uh, Peter Shadow had miraculous like, healing powers. Uh, that's wild. Cognitive bias is the, the the Bible is the the first book on cognitive bias that addresses yeah. it in in a roundabout way. <laughs> Jesus speaks in parables so that people won't understand him. That's a very uh, that's a very loose interpretation of of that. Um, Ooh, number eleven. That's an open mic favorite. Jesus turns, turns water, water into wine. wine. Yeah. That's one I'll that's never get sick of hearing. <laughs> It turned water into wine. Jesus could party. Yeah, yeah. I think I had a joke about that. Oh yeah, I'm guilty. Uh, It's a joke about being at a Catholic wedding and it's and it being too long. And I said, "Mary, Jesus turned water into wine at that wedding. Can't we turn this wine into whiskey? I mean, come on." Yeah. I I did I did do one. Yeah, there was one where I was like, uh, "It's a diuretic in the desert, and that's pretty impractical." But oh, true, a diuretic. You don't hear that word too often. (laughs) <laughs> uh, God swears by himself to himself. That's that's like a that's oh, again that's, that seems that's like a very arrogant. That's funny. <laughs> I swear to me. <laughs> that's like something DJ Khaled would do. Yeah. <laughs> Another <laughs> one. Another one. Yeah. <laughs> um the just taking things literal too, you know, that's the rich he, people don't go to heaven. That that verse, like the rich people, they interpret that. They claim that eye of a needle is in reference to a gate in Jerusalem. So it's actually saying it's not hard for the camel to go through the gate or something like that. They mm-hmm. interpret that it's okay to be rich from that verse. Mm, so the eye of a needle is actually a proper noun. And we're it's missed. the name of a, a gate in the walls of Jerusalem, which makes no sense. And then, but yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Mm insane uh let's see what jesus calls peter satan jesus walks on water oh that's a big one the that's feeding the of five thousand the five thousand one's pretty wild yeah yeah pretty- answer that science <laughs> yeah that one's like i can't probably not probably not true uh i mean all of his miracles john the baptist um i mean there's so many characters that you forget about i mean jonah being in a whale yeah for three days yeah yeah what what are he's what was he doing in there? Yeah, he, right. He's shitting in the whale. <laughs> you got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, and that whale was like, oh, I don't feel so good. Um, yeah, I got to spit must... him out. Yeah, I don't but remember how he gets out. He he does get spit out. He gets spit out. Of yeah, success. Is it God? Yeah, he was a, God put him in timeout. That's a weird <laughs> timeout. Well, Job is one of the ones that, that poor guy. That's a poor. It's like that's one of the better written books of the Bible. But it is yeah. like, wow, I can't believe they did that to him. Yeah, that's that's quite the arc. <laughs> yeah, he, the fact that he sticks with it. Yeah, wow. 
Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's, that's the insecurity of God. He's like, that's like a, it's like a girlfriend being like, well, what if I kill your cat? Would you still love me? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's sure, a, I would test your commitment. That's a kid with a magnifying glass on the ants. Mm-hmm. Right there. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, the chief of David's captains killed three, 300 men. 300? That's, that's not 6,000. That's not 6,000. It's not 6,000. But, I mean, that's in one fell swoop. He just yeah. kebobs Oh, him. at one time, right. Yeah. That's where kebabs <laughs> came from, actually. Um, <laughs> a little Philistine kebab. Yeah. A lot of murder. murder. There's a few rapes in there. I don't. Yeah, I haven't seen the, haven't seen the the Lot daughters thing where. Oh yeah, Lot, that's in there. Where Lot has sex with his daughters. Yeah. Where he tells people to have sex with his daughters. I can't remember. What were your favorite? It was the concubine. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have sex with his daughter, but they would with a concubine, and then like they split. They cut it up into like. Maybe I'm mixing that up with some other story. There's too many gang rape stories. I get them I all mixed he up. He impregnates his daughter in a cave, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost yeah. positive that that's a thing. If that's not on there, I would be surprised. Hey, COVID is just God trying to uh, trying to let us get to know him better. This is, yeah. you know. Yeah. Trying to be alone with our thoughts so we can believe in God a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people so you may know that there is no one like me in all the <laughs> earth. I think I actually think religion has gone up in the last year. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure like religion's kind of having a, a comeback because mm-hmm. people, whenever things are tough, people go to God or whatever. Mm-hmm. I only hope that people don't uh miss out on the message behind it and that that's where everything gets misconstrued is just yeah. the, the the taking things literal yeah oh, here's absolutely. lots of daughters oh yeah oh they get him drunk oh yeah. that's what it is okay that's actually kind of feminist that's kind of cool yeah they that's were like lot. we want a brother and he was Power like no the- more kids and they were <laughs> like that's what you think Our, <laughs> also, you just got him drunk that's all he needed to have sex with his daughters just to be a little bit drunk it means he was already thinking about it yeah i just needed two two wine flasks that's all i needed another thing that's funny to me is people who are hyper religious are um you know if you talk about sex that's offensive and that's vulgar and but you open the book and and it's yeah you know, people are getting raped and sex having sex with angels and and yeah you know, offering it, virgin it, daughters the whole yeah the whole like chastity thing i don't that's not really in the bible very often no there's there's a lot of those beliefs that are never in the bible oh yeah the cane gets the wife from nowhere that's a very that's a right away god has a continuity error (laughs) there are plot holes big plot hole right there (laughs) oh man moses uh moses was not the the best screenwriter yeah well yeah yeah they say moses wrote the first four or five right that's why that's why you know you got in trouble for challenging the bible you can't ask questions uh that was the answer to all the plot holes it just is okay how it is yeah why uh why did Cain have a wife uh because that's how it happens in the story <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. that's that and then uh the other yeah. one are uh, some of the rules in the bible oh the i actually used to have a joke about that first one i used to have a long joke about that when that fighting thing. another man chop off his wife's hand if she grabs your genitals i thought that was so funny because it like the only reason you make a rule in a society is if like there's a problem Mm-hmm. So like there was just a big problem of people like <laughs> grabbing each other's genitals or yeah. whatever. <laughs> He's like, we got to put a stop to this. And that's why the evangelicals love Trump. He's <laughs> he loves to grab. He loves yeah, to it's, grab. it all makes sense now. <laughs> that's it. That's that's what's up. Um, and honestly, oh, yeah. you know, say what you will about the Bible. It it did start as the bedrock to society it gave people a shared story so that you can create you can make connection with somebody so somebody who's a christian from uh from israel and someone who's a christian from rome could meet somewhere and have that connection right um, give you rules to live by there's like rules to live by like not like there are crazy rules but like the general rules are good like don't murder don't steal don't don't say where a menstruating woman is sad and then they get lost in the minutiae but yeah (laughs) like 
but uh, um, pretty much every religion has things that menstruating women are unclean, which is wild. Uh, right. Pretty much every religion has a weird thing about menstruation. Right. It's so yeah, instead the of quote, figuring out what this is, then let's, yeah. let's just say it's bad. Remember, yeah, they didn't, they didn't know, so they assumed bad, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was but, a really quick uh, jump to judgment. Yeah. The Christianity doesn't have any food things like other religions. We can eat pretty much anything we want. Except for meat on Fridays for 40 days Friday, out of the But year. then again, that's like a thing that's not in the Bible. No. That's like a made up. That's like, where did that come from? Right. Jesus but, uh, was a foodie. Uh, he was a foodie. I mean, I love Friday fish fries. They're yeah. great. But I don't do it because of God. <laughs> I just like them. Women suspected of adultery have to drink dirty water. Uh, oh, they think it's like an abortion thing? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, they would get dirt from the floor of the tabernacle and put it into the water. Cause it the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. I like it. Do you think like the official Bible, someone will be like, you know what? We have science where if you cook your meat right, you can eat anything. So let's take the pork thing out. You You raise them right. No, but... If they did that, then they'd be like, then you're admitting that what you believe in is not infallible. And mm. once you start chipping away, it's kind of an empty, it's kind of an endless slope downhill. And I think that is where most of the humor is, is, is finding the funny in people's steadfastness. Um, yeah. Really? really it, yeah. Because you, once you start chipping away, I think you make people realize like, oh, this is kind of weird, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of bizarre. It doesn't really make any sense. Mm-hmm. I still probably think there's a God, but believing in a specific religion doesn't really make sense to me anymore. Right. There's just a lot we don't understand and we interpret it within the realm of our understanding. Mm-hmm. And at that time, that's, you know, it worked It yeah. worked for them. And if you're raised with a Christian God, of course, you're going to have a, a bias because you were a kid and that's what your beliefs from a kid carry with you your whole life. So mm-hmm. that's just how it works. Mm hmm. And the yes. Muslim can do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And and as as comics, you know, or as comics, as scientists, you know, people have to challenge those beliefs in order for society to progress. Like yeah. the continual challenging of our own beliefs is what creates movement. And yeah. uh, like we have gotten pretty like we got gay marriage because we did that. Like we homophobia is less than it was when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, there is progress to be made from questioning for sure. You can't laugh at that. If you could uh, give any advice to a comic who's trying to find the humor in the Bible and share that with an audience, like try to write a joke about it, um, you know, uh, what, what kind of advice would, would you give them? Mm, wow. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Like we like we've been saying, don't don't belit. I don't think belittling ever really translates to humor in a broad sense. Like calling it might work in like oh you're in a really liberal room oh aren't conservatives stupid but i don't think good comedy is like that it should obviously be understood by a a large portion of the crowd uh to make the bible funny uh, i don't know huh it's it's i mean i struggled with it for a long time Mm -hmm. you just gotta yeah just don't go down the same road everyone goes down just it's just there's so much of comedy is just god isn't real blah 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 which maybe god isn't real i don't know but it's just don't do what everyone else is doing <laughs> that's really what it boils mm-hmm. down to comedy is funny when it's something you haven't heard before mm-hmm. that's really what it all is mm-hmm. be original make them laugh be original be original so many people don't get the most basic thing but just be original and then yeah you're not going to make people laugh when you're challenging their beliefs but if you, you can get uh, you, what am I trying to say? You can't make people laugh by challenging their beliefs, but you can get them to challenge their beliefs by making them laugh. Right. Yeah. 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 And if it's something they haven't heard before, they're more likely to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Something Absolutely. Unique and eye grabbing or whatever. Yeah. They're, they'll definitely listen up. Right. And nobody's heard of Shamgar. So exactly. And I, I'm pretty confident no one had. So I was like, okay, that's, right. that's funny. That's funny. Sounds like a one, one eyed monster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Shamgar emerged from the cave. Yeah, What's his, his name again? Shamwow. Yeah, Scotchgard. Um, I yeah. used to have a joke, Sham, where I said Shamwow, but I took that. 
Yeah, it really <laughs> cleaned up the Philistines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, God. All right. Um, plugs. Where can we find you on social media? Are there any projects you're working uh, on uh, that will be, this will be coming out sometime in April? Probably. Um, I guess, I don't know if I, I mean, I just put out videos and stuff a lot. I, it's a uh, Jeffrey ATM, Jeffrey Astomouth on uh, Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Jeffrey with a G, of course. Uh, that's my only one. Well, I, I mean, I have shows coming up, but I don't know what I would plug, but it's, they are coming back. So that's exciting. He has a website. You could uh, probably. I have a website called whitecomedian.com. Yeah, that I pay $100 for to make a couple people laugh a year. And that's perfect. Yeah, it made me smile. Yeah, I I mean, when I saw that, I that was one of the greatest days of my life. Mm. When I bought like (laughs) it's available. I'll never forget that. Yeah. I post shows on Instagram all the time. That's my main thing. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for proving that no matter how stringent your beliefs, no matter how offended or, or offensive somebody's take on your holy book, The Cat in the Hat, is yeah. mm-hmm. you can laugh at that. 